look what we got in today. Field piece, infrared refrigerant leak detector. This is the uh, DR82. We'll see how it does. We're gonna open it up and I'm excited to use it. Here are the points that they make. I like that it's water resistant. It has that rugged rubber on it. Good for all HFC, CFC, HCFC, HFOs, blended refrigerants, and many more. I like that it has a lighted tip and a screen. Uh, a big screen, because you know, I'm getting older, it's hard to see. Very simple to use. We are gonna probably have to read the manual just to make sure that we're using everything right, but it's pretty straightforward. It beeps, it lights up, screen shows you exactly what's going on. On, off, zero, and sensitivity. I like the way the case looks. So let's open it up. Let's brush through this unboxing. There ain't much to it. You get your manual, which we'll probably dig into. A charging brick that is USB-C to USB-A. So whether you have the brick or not, any USB-C to A cable will charge it. And we got some extra tips here. And let's turn it on. Super quiet. Favorite thing, because I hate the annoying, loud leak detectors. So it's going to say warm it up. And then we'll see what it does. And this is the uh, infrared. They do have a heated diode version, which is a little less expensive. And then this is like their uh, higher end one, which I personally recommend infrared. So if you guys wanna dig into that. Now let's see. We can test it real quick. Found your leak. Tells you here. You get a nice blue backlight. You get the audible tone and you get that light if you can't hear. USB charge, charging port on the bottom. That's basically about it. Very tough, very compact. I like the size of it too. And uh, we'll see how she does in the field. A lead detector is something you, is very essential.
it looks like they put dye in the system. There's dye coming out of there. That's gonna be a small leak. The ports have small leaks, just cap them. And you'll be fine. Let's go inside. The evaporator's probably like, was leaking. I think somebody already gave them a quote on replacing the evap. All right, my guess is somewhere here because there's a bunch of uh, green dye. Right there too. Somewhere there, we need to verify. Looks like it's gonna be that one bend at the end at least. All right, so I'm pretty confident that that's gonna be our leak, considering that the system has almost a good amount of charge, like not all of it, but almost there. And we probably just don't have enough to pass the TXV. So we got to pinpoint it with our uh, DR82, which did a great job. I checked on the other side just in case, nothing there. So now we're gonna check pressure and uh, superheat with our probes there field piece probes and just top it off and then I'll talk to the customer see what they want to do all right so we're back we're gonna pump it down so that we can work inside might have another leak in there because there's some dye in there which I'm not looking forward to getting on my tools but it is what it is not bad not bad That's all the nitro I had, but it hasn't moved. We'll let it run.
All right, so we're just gonna do a quick pump down and repair. Nothing crazy, I just wanna get them back online because it didn't even last a day. And product is money, time is money, so let's just get that patched up. And that's why I love the turbo torch. I didn't have to bring the whole big oxyacetylene kit just for this little patch. And we pumped it down, I'm not gonna do too much. It's just a patch repair. I got a billion other calls to get to. I'm pretty backed up, so let's get this done with. They just didn't do a good job wrapping the solder. So we're gonna go over this whole piece right here. All right, this should run really quick. We're just vacuuming the line going down. So I'm gonna be able to check check this uh, through their app wirelessly downstairs. So I'm gonna go get out of the sun for a few minutes. So would I recommend a field piece leak detector. I love the case that it comes in. It's very compact. I've had some before that come in a case that's like twice as big and then it's just a little leak detector inside. So very compact, fits on the shelf, great. And I love the build of the case. So I'm gonna keep the case for storage. And this by far has been my favorite form factor you know, design and features all in one leak detector. I do highly recommend infrared. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had good luck with it or not. I had a heated diode when I started and it still works to this day, but it takes D batteries. I already forgot what they're called. So I always, always have to go out and buy those. And also you cannot keep them in the detector itself because then the batteries die, uh, even if it's off. So that was always dead on me, uh, but that's what I started with. I did get into infrared a couple years ago. That one died, <laughs> died on me because it got wet. So it's good to know that this one is a little water resistant um, or splash resistant, whatever you want to call it. And it's like rubberized, rugged. So if I drop it, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so it has everything that I would want out of a field piece equipment, right? So I love that they do that with a lot of their stuff. They're built to last. And uh, even if you uh, don't think they will, they do. Like I have a lot of field piece stuff, all of it still works, no issues whatsoever. Love that it's USB-C charging. We can almost have everything USB-C where we can have one cable and charge everything and grab a charger that I have up here in the front for other devices, plug this one in while I'm driving and we're good to go. So I love when you can mute the uh, leak detectors so. so with infrared you get a 10 year life on the sensor so again with heated diode i did have to replace the sensor every now and then you got so many hours with those this one you get years a decade so you're good on that it'll last you um a whole lot longer obviously they give you the filters extra filters and tips so that's a nice oh and you get little gaskets too so you get everything you need to just upkeep and maintain um, the sensor lighted tip greatest feature ever so you got the tip the s loud beeping sound and then you have a backlit uh, the blue backlight is awesome uh, so that's on there it's a, a display that gives you the reading and the big uh, digital number also you can auto zero or manual zero sensitivity i would use it uh on high that's how i use mine and if i need to pinpoint it like i can't find it i lower the sensitivity and go from there so then we go medium and then it gives you another general area and then you go to low and then you might find it right on the dot if it's a hard one to find or if it's like a u-bend 
uh, like I had where it's on the end of the evaporator and it could be anywhere there because it's going to go off like in that whole area. So sensitivity is great. If you absolutely cannot find it, I would suggest trying the turbo mode. That's super high sensitivity and it should go off, which is uh, another thing. So that leak that I had in the attic, I know a lot of you guys are probably like, man, that was a super simple leak. You, you should have known without even the, using the leak detector. But a method that I've done for a while now is I've had a lot of attic leaks. I don't want to climb in the attic for no reason. So I want to pinpoint it, like I said, with a high sensitivity, narrow it down with a lower sensitivity and then use bubbles to verify. That's my whole leak detection method. So I get on a ladder, I move ceiling tiles. I don't work in residential, so I'm talking about commercial buildings. I get it, I move the ceiling tiles over and I just put it on turbo and stick it in the attic. If it starts beeping, even a little bit, I'm gonna suspect that there's a leak in the attic. Then I go up there and start inspecting the line set that goes from the uh, top of the box to the roof. So. I've had luck with that, uh, with this leak detector, uh, worked well with that method too, cause I've done it on other ones. And that's how I can tell if there's a leak in the attic. If I don't find one on the roof, I don't find one in the evaporator. Like I said, I stick it in the <laughs> ceiling tile. If it goes off on turbo, we'll go in there and we'll inspect it. All right guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm really loving this uh, field piece DR82 refrigerant leak detector. Now I've had good luck with it. I've only used it a few times so far, but you will definitely be seeing it on the channel a lot more. I love it. So of course you got the four different ways to get uh, feedback on it. That's what I love. You don't have to rely on just the tone or just the screen. You got the lighted tip too, and it, the bar graph. So all of that's great. The durability of it, the massive backlit LCD. The sensitivity is 0 0.03 ounces per year and you got a 10 year uh, sensor and my favorite thing is it does not trigger on soap bubbles. We all use the soap bubbles uh, so a leak detector that works with soap bubbles is very important so they try to minimize all the false uh, readings from it and so far it's been good for me. So I'll leave a link uh, to the website and you guys know to check out the tool link. Definitely uh, recommend this one. I love infrared just for the long life on the sensors. And I think le electronic leak detectors are essential to saving yourself time. Uh, this will tell you more or less where the leak is, if not exactly where it is. And then you go in and verify. Do your repair in and out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys.